Well, I guess that didn't work. We're gonna do something a little different here today, right, Hill? Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I gotta get in here. I think it'll be all right. Flossy <laughs> thing, where are you? She's right there, right by you, isn't she? That's not her. Oh. This is her right here. Right? Yeah. That's I... a girl. That's a girl. Get your butt off here. Come in. You can do it. Well, fine. We can. We get. We get other ways of doing this. You know, we always got options. You're more used to that, aren't you? Come in. Come in. Yes, I know it's interesting. There's lots of cool stuff to eat in here. Come in. Let's go. Well, you're remarkably reluctant. Oh, check out Red. Come in. Step right up out of there. 
You settle right in there, bossy pig. I know. Those are some big pigs next door. You're gonna tell me about it. Yeah, I know. You'll get you'll get used to your new home. JJ approves, don't you, JJ? Yeah. Our butcher is about 20 minutes drive away. Sometimes they just lock up. You're okay. Come on, Biggie. Come on. Come on, Biggie. You guys gotta get out. Come on, Biggies. Sometimes I see the bucket and they're like, oh yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, Biggies. You just get behind them. And... You gotta go the other way. You gotta go the other way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> you got a hurdle? Uh, I've got just a piece of plywood that usually oh, helps. Okay. All right. Come on, ladies. Come on. We got one. Yeah, they don't know you, so. Yep. If you're on the side that we want to avoid, you're better off. <laughs> You've got a seat. There he goes. safe and sound back at the ranch. I didn't do a lot of talking in this video, so I saved it all for the end. Number one, I got three things, three. Number one, why did we send Red to the butcher and swap in Bossy Pig as our next breeder pig? Well, as I said before, we're doing a five-year stretch for our breeder pigs, and Red was five years old. In addition, she was in the pen with JJ for three weeks. JJ showed absolutely no interest in her. So it was her time to go. I'm getting out of the business of breeding mutt pigs and bossy pig is a mutt. So she's a temporary solution to get some piglets until we have our new, new purebred pigs that we're buying in the spring up and running and breeding. And then she'll go off to the butcher in turn. Number two, two, <laughs> two. You know, I had to use the shock stick to unload the pigs, and I've never understood all the flack that comes from using a cattle prod, an electric cattle prod to move animals. It's no different than them getting zapped by the fence, and most of the people that get upset about it have never had to move pigs that didn't want to move. Sometimes pigs will lock right in place. We had a piece of plywood behind them as a hurdle, pushed them along out of the, the 
uh, livestock trailer at the butcher, but if a pig won't move, you can't push it. Not when you've got three of them ahead of you on a plywood board. So you've got to use a shock stick to get them moving. And I do not view that as being inhumane. It's no different than all the times they've walked up to the fence and got shocked right on the nose, their most sensitive part. And that brings me to number three, which is lately it's been weighing on my mind a lot, the growing disconnect between the typical person out there and the realities of farming. And ever since I've been on YouTube, that's, that, that difference in perspective has become more and more apparent to me. Some of the stuff I get back through YouTube, I can barely look at it. I, I can't believe that people just go to extremes now. Everything is about extremes, and I'm here to talk about reason. It's reasonable to grow animals for slaughter. It's reasonable for me to go through some heavy handling of those animals to send them to slaughter. It's reasonable for me to take an animal that's no longer producing on the farm and have it produce meat for the consumer. These are the realities of farming. I was talking to the butcher after we unloaded the pigs, and he was talking about some problems that he's having with animal rights activists at his dairy farm. In addition, all of the new regulations that are coming into play regarding electric powered tractors, uh, the production of methane, this is happening overseas too. I don't necessarily think that some of that environmental stuff is a bad thing, but it's not something that people can comply with on a very short timeline. We need to keep in mind how long it takes to change when you have all of these millions of dollars of infrastructure that are involved in having a large farm. So. I just see disconnects. I see extreme opinions and I see disconnects wherever I turn. And I've always tried to be the voice of reason and say that the world has a lot of color in it and that if you find yourself on one end, one pole of a spectrum, it's not a good place to exist. And I don't know, there's nothing more I can do about it than talk about it once in a while on YouTube and hope that some people actually listen. Although today, it's hard to get people to listen. Anyway, sorry to be kind of a downer at the end. These are just things I've been thinking about. They're things that influence me when I make videos and I'm thinking about what the reaction is to this, to, to what I put out there. And you know, it's not an easy job sometimes. Anyway, we're heading up toward the end of the year. I hope you have a relaxing week between Christmas and New Year's. I know I'm gonna be doing some relaxing and I'll see you next time.